Let's see. Does this tilt up? It does. Okay. Um. <clears throat> okay. I. I think we're live. Okay, everybody, welcome. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to Jack's World of Wildlife's first live stream. Um, so everybody on the Instagram, go ahead and hop on over to the YouTube. Um, okay, so today I have a few things planned um, for everybody. <laughs> Why do I have water in a beer bottle? Um, this is my little Deutschland Germany mug, and I got an Epcot Disney World. Um, because I need, I need water for the live stream. Um, okay. So, um, I have so far one person on the live on YouTube. So let's get, can people hear me? Okay. Can people, I don't actually know. There's not enough people on here to tell me if they can hear me or not. Anybody hear me? <clears throat> Say something. Um, can everyone hear me? Okay. Or do I need a mic? I have my headphones that I could plug in. Anybody hear me? Anybody hear me? Okay, I, I think we're good. I would hate to do a full live um, without anybody being able to hear me. That's a little bright. So let me... Is that better? Not quite. Uh, well, I mean, it's not as exposed. Um, okay, so... So far we have one person on the live. Is that me? Okay, uh, if you're on here, go over to the go over to Jack's Little Wildlife uh, YouTube. Get on the live stream and tell me if you can hear me. And this is all working, so I can get started. Um, I know there's three of you watching at least. Um, go comment on YouTube live. You haven't found the live stream. What? Um, you can't find it. Let's see. Share. Um, I'm going to share it to Facebook real quick. Live stream now. Uh, okay. Upload. Share to newsfeed. Did that work? The live stream is on Instagram. I know it's on Instagram. Um, what I'm asking is, can people find the live stream on YouTube? That is privated. Let's see. Um, live chat. Wait, details. Aha, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, everybody. Sorry. Okay. Okay, now go and check. Uh, I should have... It should be public now. Um, should be public. Can everybody hear me? That's embarrassing. Um, for some reason, so I clicked on go live. Um, okay, so people are people are trickling in. Okay, so move over to the YouTube. Um, 
Well, I'm glad that I did the Instagram live because I had to freaking figure out how to get everything put together. Um, so our live stream is starting a little late, a few minutes late. But welcome, 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 everybody, to the Jacksboro Wildlife first I shouldn't say annual. I'll probably do them more frequently than that. But they're our first live stream. Um, I'm thinking we're going to do a more Q&A style um, setup. But um, I may um, put some uh, stories out there for all of you. Um, so if you are on the Instagram, everybody go ahead and move over to live stream. Hey, everybody. I see you all now. I see your comments. That's great. That's good. So let's get started. Um, okay, so I'll say bye to the Instagram. Everybody hop over to the YouTube live stream now. Um, it is public. It is active. Oh, excuse me. Um, and we are ready to go. So um, actually, it, this is like not focusing right. Okay. All right. So everybody go over to the YouTube live. All right. So. Oh, oh. Uh, um, I don't, do I want to save all this? I don't, sorry, the Instagram live is being weird. Am I still on live? Nope. Okay. Okay, everybody, welcome. Um, so I guess we'll just start off. Uh, who has any questions? Um, I know there were a few questions, but I want to see who all is active right now, who all is um, participating, and I will prioritize your questions first. I have a list of questions uh, that people have already asked me, um, but go ahead and comment if you have any specific questions that you'd like answered. I'm here to answer them right now. Um, but I'm excited. I hope this, uh, this turns out well. we got 14 people on... Okay, so good. We're public now. Um, sweet. Yeah, I was like, I could not figure out what the deal was. Okay, so. Okay, so scariest animal encounter. So surprisingly, this is actually, um, actually, uh, my story. So maybe I'll start with this. Um, by far, my scariest animal encounter was the Asian elephant. Um, so this video never like got completed, um, because there just wasn't enough meat on the bones, um, for me to create the video and two Asia is really easy for me to get back to and a place that I really enjoy being. So I think I'm really going to try and prioritize getting back out to Asia to finish my elephant episode. But essentially what we, um, had happened was we were cruising on these mountain roads looking for snakes and elephants because I was trying to get more elephant footage. And so we were, on, but we're on motorbikes. So it's, I'm on one bike and then David of David's feed and then my cameraman Gage um, were on another bike. So Gage is on the back of the bike and he's filming everything that's going on. Um, while we show up, we get up, there's an elephant just browsing right off the road. So at night, these elephants are pretty gregarious in what they'll feed on. So they just kind of walk the road. It's cleared so they don't have to, you know, push through a bunch of bramble and they'll just feed. And and this is a pretty decently busy road. Um, so they're used to cars driving by, um, but they can get agitated if people, you know, hang around for for or say they're welcome. And so we had filmed with this elephant, filmed a few shots. We got a few pictures and it was starting to get bothered by us. So we were like, OK, well, we're going to leave it alone. Um, and you can really tell with the body language it, it, it had it was eating in front of us and it was doing fine. And it was, it had a little bit of an ear flap, which is kind of like, you know, Hey, I'm getting a little agitated. Um, but, uh, it, it got, it shook its head and flared out its ears a little bit and balled up the trunk. And we were like, okay, that's more than enough. Um, you know, we'll go see if we can find another elephant. So, but we were at the top of this road. So we're like, well, we'll drive down and see if we can find any other elephants to film. Uh, Cause I still needed like another two minutes worth of footage uh, to kind of tie up the episode. And uh, so we drive all the way down, no elephants. So we're like, okay, well let's move back up. You know, that other one w definitely was, you know, agitated with us, but um, you know, if he, if he was truly, you know, agitated enough, he would have moved right off the road. Um, 
And, uh, you know, we won't stop and film with that one. So anyway, we're driving um, up and um, this is a little two lane, two way road. And uh, David is in front of me with Gage on the bike. I'm behind them and we're driving. And the thing with elephants is they're they're invisible at night. Invisible. I mean, you, you get 20 feet away from them and that's when you see them. And they have the faint purple eye shine and this big hulking gray frame. And so we're just driving. Well, all of a sudden we're, we're coming up and the elephant we pull up and I'm, we're maybe 30, um, 30 feet away from the elephant. And, um, I just remember thinking, Oh, this is the angry one. Uh, David's probably going to pop a U-turn and we're going to turn around. Um, but David freaking rams on the accelerator and zooms up and around the elephant. So keep in mind when we first encountered the elephant, it was off the road. So they like, they mow the road, maybe 10 feet, um, in and then it hits the tree line and that's where the elephants were in that big kind of patch of grass on the side of the road when we pull up on the elephant this time it is in the left hand lane of the road um, so it's on the road and so david boom, zooms up past it to get around it well i'm still i'm still idling forward and this elephant here's david and turns completely perpendicular with the road taking out the entire left hand lane that's the side of the road that you drive on in thailand and I'm like, oh, you know, the elephant is taking up half the road and I've got, you know, maybe eight feet to like zoom up and get around. And I'm like, I'm, I'm just going and I'm like, this isn't, wait, this isn't like passing a vehicle. This is an animal that's agitated with us um, that is not very happy about seeing us again. And I, at the last moment I go, and I, I slam on the acceleration and I try and zoom up past this elephant. And I remember, I remember hearing a scuff and elephants are very quiet. Um, in fact, they, they, the modified pads of their feet, their, their toes are essentially elevated like this. And they've got this big pad underneath the toes. And this pad can actually kind of form around branches and stones and things like that. And they can walk relatively silently. And so I heard a scuff of its foot on the street. And I remember looking back, and I kid you not, maybe as far away as the top bit of this blanket is, um, was that elephant. Ears flared, trunk all balled up, bearing down on me. I could see it in the red um, a taillight of my, of my motorbike. And I was like, uh, because I mean, elephants can, can run about, I think, 35 kilometers per hour really quick. And the bikes take a, a bit to get up there. You know, we're cruising at like, you know, 20 kilometers per hour. Um, so I look back and I see this very angry elephant, um, very close to knocking me over. And elephants, what they'll do is they'll ball up the trunk, they'll flare the ears and they'll kick you over and step on you because they're aware of how um, heavy they are. So that's what they use. Um, and so I, I'm able to, I mean, just, I barely make it out of there. Barely. And, and I pull up next to uh, David and Gage. And uh, the first thing I yelled was, I'm immortal! Because I'd just gotten this, this traditional Thai tattoo at um, uh, this, this, this uh, temple, um, which is supposedly a protection tattoo that they gave to the um, uh, soldiers when they would go to war. And so I drive up, you know, after almost being flattened by a very um, upset elephant, uh, seemingly completely unfazed and, and Gage, uh, my cameraman was like, um, I thought you were about to die. And I was like, how the heck am I going to get back through the airport? Because I'm the one who takes care of the, okay, this is our gate. No, no, they changed, they changed the number of our flights. So now we got to go here. Duh, duh, duh. And he was like, there's no way I can get through China again, uh, by myself. And I was like, oh, you freaking jerk. I almost just died. And you're thinking about yourself. Um, but that's definitely absolutely 110% my scariest animal encounter ever. Um, okay, so next question. When will you take an envenomation from one of the larger scolopendrid centipedes? I'm considering it for next year. Um, the reason why I'm hesitant is because I feel like People are very familiar with wasp stings and hornet stings and ant stings and things like that. Um, like it's it's something that's familiar. People most times have not encountered a large centipede and especially have not been bitten by one. Um, and I feel like that kind of gives a, a mystery um, to uh, Scolopendra 
uh, specifically heroes, which is the giant desert centipede, the largest species native to North America. Um, so my main hesitation is that I feel that people associate, um, they, 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 they give a, a monster ship to centipedes. They're very scary, mysterious, you know, malevolent type creature, um, which I don't like to propagate that idea because um, they're, they're very interesting and they're very important in the ecosystems that they're part of. Um, and they're very ancient. Um, so my main thing with the centipedes, I've, I've released two uh, Texas redhead centipede videos um, and no centipede bite videos, um, mainly for that reason. The other reason is um, the venom is incredibly understudied. Um, however, it does have more amounts of uh, cardiotoxin um, than uh, some of the uh, wasps and ants. Um, so, and on top of that, I've never actually been bitten by anything um in in that centipede realm so i don't know how i would personally react i know i'm not allergic to ants bees or wasps um so i i, I don't mind going in and stinging myself with those because i know it'll just you know tell my body that it's hurting it won't necessarily um cause a really bad reaction uh centipede bites also are super variable um uh, not only in in pain but also in uh effects um, I, I know some friends who are like, oh, yeah, I got, you know, a sizable feeding response bite from, you know, this giant desert centipede. And, you know, I, I took some Benadryl and slept it off and, you know, swelling was going down in six hours. And some people who are like hospitalized for three days. So I'd much rather prefer to do um, more of the hornets and, and wasps. I, I'd like to get out and do executioner wasp. I'd like to get out and do uh, Vespa mandarinia, Asian giant hornet. Uh, I feel more comfortable with those, and 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 to be honest, I I, I do know more about um, the hymenopterans. Uh, so it's just uh, there's a few things going into it. I, I'm considering it. I am, uh, but I also don't want to spend a bunch of money on going to the hospital for it. So very good question. Okay, how many frog tanks do I have now? Uh, well, I have a very large frog room. Uh, that's part of my business. I breed Ufaga genus dart frogs. So I've got quite a few frog tanks off the top of my head. If I had to count, uh, probably like 30 or 35 tanks. I don't actually know the exact number. Uh, I will be doing if like in-depth frog room tour video uh probably in the next few weeks i've been collecting footage uh, so that it's nice and fleshed out because the frogs aren't always cooperative some days over others so very good question a lot of frogs i have an entire room dedicated to just keeping the frogs uh favorite dart in captivity versus favorite one i've seen in the wild oh that's a good one my absolute favorite frogs that i have right now are my uh, ufaga histrionica large form redheads uh, they are absolutely stunning frogs, red, oranges, yellows, just beautiful, active, very, very prolific. And they do really well for me. I am a huge fan of them. They're native naturally to uh, Colombia. Sadly, I have never been to Colombia, so I've never seen them in the wild. My favorite dart frogs I've seen in the wild is probably a tie. I always love seeing um, Ufaga pamelio blue jeans while I'm in Costa Rica. However, I have seen uh, Dendrobates erratus in the wild, Costa Rican erratus. Those are nice green and black frogs. Um, and I've also seen Phylobates vitatus, which is probably one of the rarest uh, dart frogs I've seen in the wild. So I would say uh, probably Phylobates vitatus just because it's the rarest. And I've seen hundreds of Pabilio when I go to Costa Rica. Uh, but that was a great question. I, I, I love to see Ufaga in general, so I'm always going to be partial to those. Um, but the Vitatus is also a really, really cool and unique species that I've been able to see. Okay, so, all right, so now we're down to Wildlife Brothers. I mentioned this in a comment earlier, but I was wondering if you could explain a bit about your philosophy about the bite and sting video. So this is interesting because this is actually one of the main reasons behind the creation of my channel. Um, a few years back, I had this idea and I, I just kind of shut it down. I was like, I don't really have enough money. I don't have a crew. I don't have the capacity 
to create this idea of Jack's World of Wildlife, an educational show similar to what I was watching growing up with, you know, uh, Crocodile Hunter, Steve Irwin, uh, Jeff Corwin Experience, those types of of one-on-one shows showcasing a species or going out and finding something. And so I really, I really said, you know what, I, I'm just not in the place right now. I can't do it. And a few years roll by, all of a sudden, boom, is, is, is Coyote Peterson's bullet ant sting video, which went viral and just exploded him out of nowhere. And honestly, I was like, this is kind of inappropriate. Um, I, I, I had done sting tests, uh, years prior, just, just for my own, you know, personal fun. Like in 2017, we were in Costa Rica and I was going, Oh, I wonder how bad this trap giant will sting. Oh yeah. That, that hurts more than, than that other trap jaw. And it hurts less than the giant Neoponera velosa down there and that type of stuff. So it's not that I had jumped onto this train per se, but I was seeing people in the comments like, Oh my gosh, that's so crazy. You know? I, I would just stomp on every single one I saw. I'm never going to Costa Rica. All this, this really negative type of stuff. And and not only that, but the videos themselves were 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 just bankrupt of 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 educational value. And so for me, I was like, th- that's not okay with me um, to have somebody have such a, so much of a following, and instead of teaching people to respect um, our insect life, which is some of the most important life on the planet. Um, and instead capitalizing on, 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 on how afraid and, and disgusted of insects that people already are. I was like, that's, that's not what we need to be doing here. Um, we're already losing thousands of species of insects due to development and, and agriculture and, and, and climate change. And we need to rally around these, these very sensitive and, and, and incredibly important animals, especially hymenopterans, ants, bees, and wasps arguably do do most of what we need insects to do. And so my, my philosophy in that is I'm never going to do intentionally, if I get bitten by something, that's, that's one thing or another. I'm never going to do bite videos with vertebrate animals because vertebrate animals are not inherently uh, aggressive. And there's no reason to stress an animal out just to get it to attack me for, for views. So my, the, the, the ethics of Jack's World Wildlife is an invertebrate with a very simple immune, uh, I mean, not immune system, nervous system um, released afterwards. These, these insects, wasps and ants can sting thousands of times in, the, in their lifespan. Uh, they, they hunt by stinging their prey to, to um, paralyze it and bring it back to the nest. And so what I found was this was the only way to, to bring people in to educate them about these animals. So instead of, of they're going, oh, great, another sting video. Yes, I want to see people get hurt by these super scary creatures. And then they watch and they're like, oh, actually, I saw that you you were handling it for 10 minutes and it had no interest in stinging you. Or wow, that actually doesn't hurt as much as other people say it hurts. That's interesting. I'm interested in learning more about that type of thing. And that's my goal with the sting videos. I don't like having to rely on them uh, I would love to focus more on on reptiles and birds and fish, et cetera. Um, but that's really what what has really been bringing a lot of people in and changing a lot of people's minds. Those are my those are my mythbuster uh, type videos, which which are, are my more popular videos. Um, and so whatever I can do to bring people in and teach them to respect wildlife, because I make it a point in every single one of my sting videos to. Make sure that I'm compassionate and teaching other people's other people to be compassionate about wildlife because animals, no matter what species they are, matter and they're important. And in fact, our smaller species are even more so important uh, because we rely on them much more heavily in day to day survival. I mean, pollination, plant propagation, uh, you know, just continuing to be able to have fresh air to breathe. We need insects to maintain plant life, to maintain our atmosphere. And our ecosystems. Um, so that is why I, I've just been so adamant on putting an emphasis on those sting videos. Not only because it does bring in a lot of people, so that I, and, and two, it gleans people out of out of those types of you know real big you know uh, kind of extortionist style YouTube videos of just like oh here's a super scary centipede that's gonna attack me. Oh my gosh, I'm being attacked by an animal. And instead, it's saying oh I, I'm gonna st- 
let it sting me so you guys can see what that's like. But first, I'm going to teach you about it and teach you that it's not an aggressive animal. Really, it's not hardly even a defensive animal. If I punch my hand into the nest, yeah, they're all going to come and attack me. But wouldn't you? Um, and that is is the main thing with the sting videos that's important to me is to make sure that everybody doesn't look at these creatures as, as monsters, but, but as animals and not only that, but important animals that we owe a lot to. Um, so absolutely amazing question. Um, okay. Next. When did you know that this was your calling? Um, specifically animal stuff or YouTube? Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to do a brief summary on animal stuff and then I'm going to assume it's YouTube. Okay. So I've always loved animals. Uh, ever since I was a kid, I uh, couldn't get enough of them. I was always outside catching bugs and lizards and frogs and stuff. Uh, and it's just kind of snowballed. You know, I started with easy stuff I could find in my yard, you know, woodhouse toad, you know, green anoles and that type of thing. And just loved looking closely at the world around me and, and learning. I, 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 I consider myself to be a, a, just a passionate student uh, of the world and, and, so I was able to to really cultivate a a, a love and, and a desire to be in nature, um, and so that's really fed into my interest now as an adult. And so I would say with with my with the calling of the YouTube again, it was that type of thing where I, I'm I'm I feel that I'm pretty engaging. Um, I, I've got high energy. I, I'm most of the time articulate other than all my, my filler ums and uh, while I'm trying to keep up with my mouth and my brain. Um, so I just, I, one day I was just like, there's, there's nobody better, um, to change people's minds about the stuff that I'm passionate about than me. And, and you could argue for or against that statement, but I was looking at what was, what I was really disagreeing with and having a hard time with in the kind of content that was coming out and people were getting popular for, and it just felt like it wasn't, and people have had their issues with him, but it wasn't like Steve Irwin who, who you just saw the, the, just the love and the passion for wildlife just exude out of him. I saw people seemingly just exploiting uh, the natural world and, and wildlife just, just, for their own YouTube. And it was more about, you know, what they were doing and how they were just interacting with the animal and then less of an educational thing. Um, I mean, and that's its own thing. There's a place for that, but that's entertainment, really. That's not education. And, and, and that's what I'm passionate about is education. I, I am somewhat of a teacher myself. And so I've, I've had this passion to teach people and I always have been teaching people. So it's not that I necessarily know what is my calling or not, but that I just feel that this is something that I absolutely have to give my all and, and try and do. I don't want to end up, you know, 30 years down the road talking to my kids about what remains of the Great Barrier Reef or why we can only see orangutans at the zoo and, and you know, X and Y and Z and just say, well, you know, so much stuff was happening. I didn't think I could make a difference. So I didn't even try. Um, this channel may never, you know, get big. It might never pay for itself. It's very expensive right now for me to pay for all the travel. Um, I'd love to just get it to be self-sustaining. Uh, but, um, yeah, I, I don't regret any of it. Uh, like I said, this is something I really enjoy doing and I'm really glad that I've been able to do so. Um, great, great question. What's your dream animal to feature on the channel? Oh, that's a hard one. Well, I think right now, uh, at the top of my list, uh, there is this, uh, there's Arctic free diving out of Norway, uh, where you can dive with, um, killer whales, orcas. And I have to say out of anything I could think of, that would probably be the coolest thing imaginable. Uh, we were able to do some diving with sharks and some manatees recently, and that's really gotten me excited about, uh, other opportunities uh, in, in the marine uh, aspect of things. And I think my dream animal to feature on the channel would either be orca whales or my favorite species of cetacean, sperm whales, Physeter macrocephalus. Those two top tier for me. If I could dive with those, I feel like that'd just be a life-changing experience. Obviously more orangutans. That's probably my favorite species of animal. Um, but since I've already featured them, I'm not going to include them. Uh, okay. So, 
Let's see. What is my favorite arachnid? Oh, um, I like a lot of arachnids. I think Latrodectus elegans is a really beautiful species of widow spider. Um, of course, Sydney funnel webs are really pretty. And uh, maybe... Um, I really do like the, the phonutria, the wandering spiders as well. I, I'm a sucker for the venomous stuff. Um, you know, I'm not going to sit up here and be like, oh, oh, wolf spider and black widow, you know, same thing. No, there's just something about the venomous stuff. It just looks prettier. So I'd say those top three. Um, I'm, I, and I'm more of a spider guy over scorpions. There's a lot of really cool scorpions, but um, I, I like spiders more. Uh, what are my thoughts on timber rattlesnakes? I, I, I like them. They're cool. Um, they're, they're threatened in Texas. Uh, there's only a few, you know, decent pockets where you can find some of them. Uh, so I've never been able to find them here. Um, I have to go out East to get some, but, uh, they're really cool snakes, really beautiful. Probably one of my favorite species, uh, in North America. Um, absolutely really beautiful snakes. Um, Will we ever see a Formicarium ant collection video? Okay, uh, so I, I don't know. I don't have too much in in the way of ants. I have one Neopon Revolosa queen right now, and she's been kind of finicky in starting her colony. Um, and now it's winter, so she may or may not be able to stabilize a colony in time before she has to go into dormancy, and that might affect her longevity. Um, but should I produce uh, some more form formicariums? I'm working on some other projects, possibly with some zoological facilities in the area um, in incorporating maybe leaf cutter ants or bullet ants or things like that. And uh, I would definitely showcase that type of stuff on the channel. I did ants for a long time, uh, 2016 through like 2017. Um, I was just full ants, ants, ants. I, I sold them. I built formicariums. I did all that stuff. I think ants are really fascinating. And um, I got dog hair on me. And uh, I'd love to focus uh, or, or feature a lot more ants on the channel. Uh, I sell frogs, which is my website. I do not have a website. Well, I, ha I own one. I haven't put one together yet. Um, I sell all my frogs on MeWe. There's a few groups on there. A lot of the Facebook sale groups got shut down and moved over to MeWe. Um, and so a lot of the hobbyists kind of moved over that way. Um, okay. So, Hey Jack, currently waiting. Here's my question. Have you, or do you ever plan on doing any episodes regarding insects or animals that are native to the Northwest, like Idaho or Oregon? I would love to. Um, I, like I said, I have, I had some Alaska stuff done. I, I came out of Seattle, Washington up into Alaska. Uh, I'd love to get back up North, uh, whales, um, bears, uh, wolverines, all that type of stuff. Uh, I'd love to get some stuff on the channel about that. Um, but like I said, uh, my mammal videos just don't do too well. So I'm focusing on putting a lot more insect and reptile stuff on the channel to try and get it toddling to the point where it can stand on its own two feet and then we'll we'll be implementing a lot more mammal uh videos absolutely um aratus are amazing yes they are redheads are sweet i agree um uh, what do you think about florida about the florida native killing the iguanas um well it gets difficult because what happens is when you have invasive species, there's sort of like an ethical dilemma of whether or not people are, you know, eradicating them or removing them from an environment uh, with the best intentions uh, or whether they're just enjoying slaughtering a bunch of animals. Um, I think before you can even discuss the ethics of removing invasive reptiles, uh, feral cats have to come first. Feral cats kill millions and millions and millions of animals every year, native animals, far more than, than the invasive reptile population. And they can spread everywhere. They're native to every single state. Um, and I, I, I don't, I don't like the killing of really any species of animal, but, but those that, that you can save animal lives by removing I'm a hundred percent in uh, favor of. So by, by removing feral cats, you can save, you know, a hundred thousand songbirds and, and small animals and mammals that year. I mean, they, they kill so many species of wildlife. Um, 
So technically, I, I'm not sure if there's a specific instance you're referring to here. I've seen a lot of just really sketchy stuff with a lot of the Florida, you know, invasive remover guys that are just like, you know, killing stuff and making boots and bags out of the skins. And I, it's 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 gross. It's it's ugly. I, I don't find it necessarily ethical at all. Uh, I'm not in support, really, of a lot of that. Now, removing invasive species, stamp of approval. Um, doing so in a really disrespectful and 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 just gross way, uh, I don't. I'm not a big fan of. Okay. Sup, dog. Just want to say thanks for making me less afraid of spiders. You're very welcome. Uh, that's my job. Like I said, I I I don't want people to to be so fearful about um, the world around them. I mean, everything's an animal, and it's just trying to go about you know living its life and doing its thing. And and we need to understand. You don't have to like. Uh, insects and arachnids and, and, and reptiles and stuff, um, but you do need to respect uh, their role in the environment and um, what they do for us uh, and the environments that they're part of. Uh, let's see. Don't forget to hit the like button, everyone. That's correct. Um, are you are you already going green? Like no more plastic straws and utensils? Oh man, that's a hard one. My, I I'd love to go green. Um, I, I, I definitely implement uh, a lot of green strategies in, in some of my business and, and, and what I'm able to do. Um, it's just so difficult, um, especially when I'm on trips. Um, you know, a lot of times we're, we're, we're having to eat at gas stations or, or fast food and all that type of stuff is, is, is harmful. It's got so much trash that comes with it. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say that what I'm doing is, is perfect. And then I'm all perfectly green. So I look good on, 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 online. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I, I could be doing more. And, um, I, I, I try to do as much as I can. Uh, I, I recycle, I try and reuse a lot of stuff. Um, I, I'm working on putting some more, uh, plants out of my backyard, uh, for local pollinators. I, I, I did a whole project on my front and backyard. Uh, this past year I'm doing more work, um, this coming year and I'm going to put in a compost cause, uh, cause we do, we throw away a lot of organic food materials like that. And I'd really like to reuse some of that. So to answer your question, sadly, no, um, I am not fully green, no waste. Um, but I do try my best and, uh, it, it just gets so difficult, especially in this day and age. Cause Seems like everything comes in plastic or, or or paper, or it's a company pretending to be green, and and really they're you know minimizing costs by utilizing you know illegal labor in other countries, and then they're going to package it like oh you know we're, we're environmentally friendly and just to charge a premium. So it, it gets very difficult to ethically source um, a lot of products, but um, it's definitely something that I'd like to move more towards. I think it's very important. Um, Thank you, Jack, for answering my question. Have a good night. Stay safe. By the way, it's 2.22 a.m. in Switzerland. Well, I'm glad that I answered your question. Um, I hope that you are getting some rest. So it's a little late to stay up. Okay. Hi. Hello, Jack. Hey, everybody. When will you make more collabs with Afro Herp Keeper or the Wildlife Brothers? Great question. So I'm in talks already with Dan, Daniel Carter, uh, with Afro Herp Keeper. I actually texted him today. Um, we've actually already filmed a frog room tour, uh, for his channel. Uh, he's going to release a few other episodes first. Um, but we've already got that one, um, filmed together. I'm working on trying to get collabs with him in February. Um, so soon I'm working on it. I'd like to do a lot of collabs this coming year, uh, with COVID, hopefully with the vaccine slowing all this COVID stuff down, we can get back to, uh, somewhat of a more productive YouTube, uh, schedule. And um, I'm really going to try and get a lot more collabs down this year. Great, great question. Uh, let's see. Hey, man, you shouldn't have to get stung for views. You give us so much information. You make it interesting. I appreciate it. You're one of the best. I appreciate every comment like that. Um, I wish that my algorithms reflected such uh, sentiment. Uh, man, how did you handle the centipede without fearing getting bit? That's a tricky one. So that centipede, that's the first time I ever handled it. And centipedes are tricky because they're, they're antenna. They, they like spiders have really poor eyesight and, and they, 
kind of feel around with their legs, but centipedes, they feel around with those antenna and they can like taste and like sense what is food with the antenna. So I was worried that it was going to be, you know, walking around on my hands and then it was going to feel that I'm like organic material and bite into me and chew into me. So I actually did not know if the centipede was going to bite me or not. However, um, it was really calm after a bit. I wasn't really worried about it anymore. Um, but every centipede is different. Uh, I, I don't go around just catching them with my bare hands because I don't want to get bitten by a giant centipede. Um, I wasn't nervous if I was going to get bitten and you guys would get your centipede bite video and, you know, whatever happens, happens. Um, but I was definitely hoping it wasn't going to bite me. But that's a good question. Uh, let's see. Hey, Jack, if you had to push a button to make one species extinct, what would it be? Wow. I guess I won't say human beings. <laughs> uh, that, that make life on the planet a lot easier. Um, honestly, I would say feral cats, the domesticated cat. I think that, that is the second most destructive organism on the planet. So cats. I, and I like cats. I have a cat, but it is an inside cat. Any cat outside of a home, boop, extinct. Um, okay, let's see. Have you been to Australia? I absolutely have. Uh, I went in the end of 2018. We filmed eight episodes there. Um, it was great. I'm really hoping to get back um, this following year. I'd love to do a lot more stuff in Australia. It's a beautiful place. I've got some really close friends there. Uh, beautiful wildlife, beautiful geology and landscape. Oh, it's just a great place to go. Okay. Blah, blah, da, 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 da. Okay. Hello, Jack. Thank you for doing good work. Thank you. I came across your channel after doing research about black widows. I stumbled across your black widow bite video and you made me feel comfortable with them. That's great. That's exactly what I've been trying to do. Um, it was a rough um, filming, uh, which hasn't necessarily been as fruitful in, in rewarding my channel as I had hoped, but um, I'm the, I'm really the only person who's fully documented a, a severe Black Widow envenomation. Um, and I did so because people think that they're deadly dangerous, and they're not. Um, you, you know, 99 times out of 100 will survive a Black Widow bite if you're a healthy human being. Um, even even kids and, and the elderly uh, with with pain medicine and, uh, you know, maybe you have to go to the hospital and get an IV run just to make sure you're hydrated so that your body can purge the toxins, but it should not kill you. Um, people are like, well, there's that one death, of, you know, a black widow in the United States in 1983. Um, you'd be hard. I, I, I've looked into it and I, I still don't think it was purely um, the Latrodectus uh, venom i think there had to be some other complication if you have heart problems uh then it can definitely affect the kidney issues definitely that can affect um how you react to black widow venom but i'm glad that, that helped you uh not be so uncomfortable around them they're really they're really not aggressive they're some of the more timid spiders I, i've ever even come in contact with i'm i'm often so surprised when people are so afraid of being bitten by them because they you you poke their web and they'll run into the back um Oh, thank you, sir. $25 from Arna100. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Let's get the algorithms where they should be. I'm trying. Um, honestly, with, with uploading twice a week, I'm hoping we can kind of get back into that rhythm. I was doing really well um, this summer. I was doing really well into September and October, um, but I didn't upload anything in October. Uh, I was getting married. I, I, you know, I was on my honeymoon, all this stuff, all this junk was going on and it was, I was too busy. I took a break and uh, my channel really fell off the end in November. Uh, I was, I was operating at, at like 40% of what I was operating at in October. Uh, keep in mind, I wasn't uploading anything in October. Um, so it's been kind of like an uphill battle to get back on top and, and, and get stuff back to where I need it to be. So I really appreciate all the support that you guys give me. Every share, every every little bit of, of encouragement and, and and participation is 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 priceless. Um, so thank you very much. Very generous. Um, let's see. Hi, Jack. What was the first insect you got stung or bitten by? Uh, great question. Um, I think the first 
sting I remember was a honeybee. Um, so in my old house, I used to live uh, out in Louisville um, in, in the North Texas area. And um, I, uh, oh, oh, hold up. Okay. And um, we had this big trumpet vine that grew on top of our fence. And these little, the trumpet vines have these little trumpet shaped flowers, kind of real conical like that. And I would catch bees. I'd, I'd get a water bottle and I would, I would put them over the flowers and then the bees would fly up into them. And I'd catch a bunch of bees and I'd just listen to them in the water bottle. Um, but one time I had a bee, I guess, fall out and I stepped on it and it stung me right in the bottom of my foot. And I think that was the first time I had been stung by a bee. And I, it hurt. I cried. You know, I was like three at the time or four maybe. And I went inside. My mom pulled the stinger out. Um, but uh, it, it never dampened my love for uh, wildlife, specifically hymenopterans, the stinging social insects. Uh, great question. Uh, nobody else had asked that. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is an interesting question. Can animals of any kind have STDs, and can we contract the STD uh, that they have if they have it? So it's an interesting question. Um, the answer is 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 no. Um, not all animals can have STDs. Typically, you see that represented in mammals. Um, uh, you you don't really have a lot of sexually transmitted viruses or, or bacterium that uh, you can have occur in a lot of other species. Um, and as far as that goes, a lot of times they will be specific to that animal. Um, uh, there'll be different like strains or very uh, varieties of like a virus, um, like, like, like koalas, koalas struggle. Uh, a lot of koalas populations struggle with a strain of chlamydia. It's not the same uh, strain as what uh, humans can contract, but uh, sorry if there's too much information. Uh, a great, an interesting question with an interesting answer. So, um, but uh, no, you cannot. Um, but uh, I'm not sure what you would do with that information. Um, okay, let's see. Also, oh, okay. Also wondering if you heard back from Hornet King. Yes, I have. Uh, we've been emailing back and forth. Uh, we're probably going to get something on the books for late summer of next year because that's the best time for uh, nest removal. So we'll be doing a collab then. Um, oh, Dan hopped on. Hi, it's Dan. I have two or more videos of Jack on my hard drive. And whenever I actually get the time to edit and release them, I hope they bring about some of the channel growth he deserves. Oh, such a sweetie. Love you, Dan. Okay, so that answers some of y'all's questions about the collabs. Uh, we're also working on some other stuff together. Um, he only lives about three and a half hours away from me at the moment. Um, but uh, he's been working on a bunch of new stuff and getting a lot of new animals in. And so I've been uh, giving him some space so he can get a lot of his stuff done. Um, but uh, we're good, close friends, and I'm sure we'll have a lot more stuff uh, here in the next year, I'm hoping. Maybe you can come with me on a trip. Uh, let's see. So thanks for answering. I found you through Instagram bullet ant hashtags after looking into the Satiri Mawe ritual. Um, anyway, would love to do an interview with you in the near future. Thanks again. Um, cool. Yeah. I, hit me up on, on Instagram. Maybe, uh, if you have a podcast or something, I've been doing a few of those. Um, it's been a while. Jack Henry, I know who you are. <laughs> Hi, it's been a while, but I'm one of your cousins from the Illinois area. Just wanted to sit, just stop by and say I love you. Uh, I, oh, I love what you're doing. Well, I love you too. And I love your videos. Keep it up. Oh, thank you, sir. Keep watching. What is my favorite species of mantid? Um, I would say I'm a big fan of uh, Coeridotus, uh, the, the, the hooded mantids. Um, I've been able to find a few of those in the wild uh, with some buddies of mine that are real big into hooded mantids. Um, some of like the really cool like dragon mantids of Asia are neat, but I've never seen any of those in the wild. So I would say Corridotus is my uh, favorite genera. Um, if I had to pick one, I don't know, Stolly, maybe they're big, broad pronotum. Um, Wildlife Brothers, we'd be honored to collab trying to get out to West Texas soon. West Texas is a really pretty area, um, but South Texas, that's where it's at. Down in the valley, uh, at the very southern tip of Texas, you get some of the most impressive bird diversity and and uh, animal species that range up from Central America and South America uh, in the entire United States. 
Um, that's one of my favorite places to go. West Texas is, is pretty, um, it's a lot different, uh, habitat. It's more arid. Um, but I'm partial to South Texas. So I've got a lot of good friends and stuff down there. Um, okay. What are your opinions on Polisti's card effects? The executioner wasp. Um, my opinions are that I would like to find it and do a sting video. I, I do think that it's exaggerated. However, I would say Polisti's sting very painfully and Polisti's carnifex and Polisti's major um, are massive Polisti's wasps and they can sting pretty bad. So, so I'm interested to see, I don't know just how much different the venom is uh, than some of the smaller species, but if it's a higher yield, uh, you would react pretty heavily to it. Uh, so I'm interested to see. I don't think it's going to hurt more than like Vespa and Vespa Mandarinia and Vespa Tropica that I've done because those are hornets that are like two and a half inches long. Um, you can't tell me that, you know, just because somebody said it was going to hurt the most that it's necessarily going to hurt the most. Um, but I'm always willing to put my money where my mouth is. Uh, I can't say anything until I've done it. Um, so that's my opinion on Polistes Carnifex. Um, couldn't you do something like no fields and just drive around for your traveling plans? Like he has a job as a truck driver. Couldn't you do something similar? Um, well, it's not necessarily an issue with money. Like my, I, I, my business, I, I do service accounts. Uh, so I have to be here and, and the frogs I have to take care of, you know, multiple times a week. Um, but, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know exactly what he does. I, I think he had, uh, I actually don't know. I, I don't want to, I don't know the guy. So, um, huh. I don't know. I, 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 I'd prefer to work here or get the YouTube to make enough money so where I can just focus on producing content. Uh, okay. I wish I discovered you a while ago so I could see you in Costa Rica. So if you ever come back, I would definitely recommend a few spots. Great. Um, I, I, I'm planning on trying to get back to Costa Rica at some point, uh, to do the executioner wasp uh, and film a bunch of other stuff because I'm really familiar with Costa Rica. Um, I lived there for two and a half months back in 2018 working there. Um, I've been there uh, two separate times, um, on trips and I think I can get a lot of content filmed and, and get out to a lot of stuff. I'd, I'd uh, feel free to shoot me a message on uh, Instagram, uh, with details about that. Thanks, Jack. Love what you do from South Carolina. Thank you, Wishbone Jones. Uh, let's see. Jack, you are too underrated on here. Tell me about it. The work I do for you people. The work I do. I took a black widow bite and a brown recluse bite and all these other stings. And ain't nobody giving me my dues here. Some lovely hearts from Dan. So sweet. Uh, do you have a positive outlook for humans and nature for the future? Ooh. That is a heavy question. So I'll try and answer this, I don't know, delicately, I guess. Um, so the issue with the human nature relationship is that we are on such a large scale, a massive, massive scale now in terms of population, in terms of, of uh impact uh we're, we're at the most populous point that we've ever been and so we we can do a lot of damage and we have done a lot of damage uh, some of which is irreversible um however this does give us a lot of 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 potentially beneficial impact uh we have the technology we have the the people uh that we really can turn things around but it is a matter of 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 pressuring um uh you know government agencies and 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 state representatives to to voice our concern for the world the environment around us uh we need to make sure that that we're doing everything in our power to be good stewards of this planet and the organisms that we share it with um so i i i wouldn't say i have a positive outlook but i would say i have a negative outlook um I am cautiously optimistic that we can reverse a lot of the damage that we've done, but I'm also painfully aware of the amount of damage uh, that we have in fact created. 
Um, so I hope that's not too heavy for you, but um, that's definitely something that, that keeps me motivated and keeps me pushing and trying uh, to do better and to teach other people um, how to do better. And, and, and not only that, but what they can do uh, to help. That was a great question. Um, thanks for answering. We'll continue to watch your awesome informative videos. Keep it up, brother. Appreciate it. Uh, have you heard the story of the Lord Ho stick insect extinct for 80 years and found again not too long ago? I have not. Um, but uh, it sounds believable. Uh, insects and amphibians and, and, and reptiles a lot of times will kind of fall off the map per se. And then you'll find a little pocket of them because being so small, uh, they're very easy to rediscover. Um, I have not. So maybe... Uh, Attach that in a link or, or something in, in, in one of the recent videos or something. I'll take a look. Uh, have you ever been stung by a carpenter bee? I have not. I've caught a few, but I have not been stung by them. Is there a species that you've been pursuing for a long time for the channel that has constantly eluded you? Um, specifically for the channel, let me think. Um... Hmm. I don't know. Um, let's think here. Uh, I would say one of the main species that has eluded me for, for many years, including when I tried to put it on the channel, is um, Lucanus elephas, the giant stag beetle. Uh, I have been looking for giant stag beetles for like eight years. I, I love beetles. I used to keep a lot of them, uh, raise the, uh, raise the, a, a large number of them and they're native to my state. And I've gone looking so many times uh, for Lucanus elephas and been unable to find them. And in fact, I drove all the way to Arkansas uh, this past summer to find them. And I found two larvae. So I haven't technically been eluded by them, but I've yet to find adult males. So I raised a bunch that I got from a friend of mine, uh, which actually just hatched out. Um, and maybe I'll show you guys uh, on Instagram. I'm going to move over and I'm just going to do a quick kind of uh, sneak peek of the frog room tour. And I've got those beetles in there and I can show you guys. Uh, I would say Lucanus elephas is probably the one that has eluded me the most. Uh, however, there's been plenty of stuff that I was unable to find on some of my trips. We really were targeting a lot of venomous snakes in Australia. We found the one red belly black snake. Um, I went looking for platypus in Australia, did not find any koalas, did not find any. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that like I'll go looking for that I just won't find. Um, but I wouldn't say that it, is, it eludes me just because I have so little time to find a bunch of stuff like that. Um, when I'm in country, but that's a great question. Uh, what do you think about the Asian giant her hornets, murder hornets being found in Washington? Uh, Uh, they've, they've found a very limited amount. In fact, um, just recently I was impressed because they did find some, some sizable nests, some colonies. And um, that's impressive because at first I think they found, um, they found one nest uh, in, in Canada and then one like dead individual in Washington state. And people were going, oh, we're being invaded by, by murder hornets. And people out in, you know, Pennsylvania, oh, you know, finding some invasive European hornet. And going, oh, no, they're all the way over here. We're going to get carried off in a swarm of hornets. Um, they're not detrimental, really, to the environment. Uh, people get really afraid because they kill honeybees. Honeybees are invasive. Uh, people farm them for honey, um, but they brought them from Europe. So they actually... Um, negatively impact our native bee population, solitary bees, carpenter bees, and things like that. Um, so really, it wouldn't be that bad to have them be invasive. Birds would eat a lot of them. Um, you know, it's the squirrels, bears would probably try and eat their larvae out of the nest. I, it, it wouldn't be a full-scale invasion. And, and even so, they're really only defensive around their nests. They're pretty peaceful uh, outside of that, like most wasps. Um, so my opinion on that is that it's it, it has happened. So they 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 they're coming over from Asia somehow. I don't know if it's if it's transports or something bringing them over. A queen maybe during a nuptial season, um, but I don't know. Uh, but that's that's my uh, 
opinion or what I think about them. Uh, thanks for answering. I love your videos. I'm a fan. Sweet. Uh, have I ever been stung by a carpenter bee, wasps, or beetles? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, I do get bitten by beetles quite a lot because I keep them. I, I just helped some stag beetles out of a cocoon, and one really got me like right tiny little pinch on my skin on this finger and stuck through my skin, which was not very fun. When they come out fresh, they're really sharp. What do I do besides YouTube? Uh, well, I'm currently uh, going back to school this next semester um, uh, to get working on getting my degree. I, I took a lot of time off to try and do this Jackson Wildlife stuff. Um, but now with this, with my business that I, that I also do, um, I've got a little extra time and I figured I should just go ahead and get some of that stuff put together. Um, let's see. I was late. Have we been introduced to my crew, the peeps who travel with you and film, light, search, etc.? Very good question. Uh, I'm by myself today. Um, my crew is almost usually just myself and one other person. Um, I have a main cameraman who comes with me on most stuff, um, uh, whose name is Gage and he's kind of popped up in a few episodes. He's in uh, stinging my cameraman. Uh, he's usually the one to help me. Um, also some other people on my team, uh, regularly, uh, Jaden Herrera. Um, he's in the tarantula hawk sting, um, the, the dung beetle episode. Those are all, those are all filmed, uh, down at his ranch. Um, uh, Hercules Hernandez, I travel with on occasion, uh, typically out to West Texas because he lives down in Del Rio. Uh, and then other than that, sometimes when I go to another country, I hit up a friend that I have in that country to help me film. Uh, so it's kind of like I say that I say, oh, you know, we at Jack's World Wildlife are, are really excited to go on this next trip. Uh, really what I mean is like me and then like whoever's available to help me uh, do stuff. Um, but I, I'm open in the future to, to having some some like uh skype interviews with some people that i've had on the team to talk about you know previous trips and and what it was like and stuff like that if you guys are interested in that kind of thing um howdy brother-in-law are you going to stream more in the future become a twitch gamer debate lord or something um I, i'm definitely planning on streaming more in the future however uh Twitch gamer and debate lord, um, that's up in the air. So we'll see. Um, okay. Uh, oh, Dan is answering your question here. So Lord Ho, stick insect were rediscovered on just one or two shrubs on an island cliff face. A good example of how cliff, cliff dwelling organisms can outlive their counterparts because their habitat is impossible to access. Very good. What is my favorite species of bee? Um, I really love, uh, orchid bees. Um, there's a ton of species in Costa Rica and they're usually just metallic, iridescent, shiny, you know, green, blue bees. Um, uh, they're really pretty. I would say those are my favorite species of bee. Um, let's see. What are my top three favorite venomous snakes? Um, oh, that's a good one. Uh, I would say number one, I, I, I really do enjoy working with, uh, King Cobras. Uh, they're just so different from everything else. Um, so King Cobras for sure. Um, I would say Caliophis bivergatus, uh, the Malaysian blue coral snake. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning species of snake. Maybe... Maybe like a collets snake from Australia. Uh, really nice red collets. Um, those are really pretty snakes. I would say that those are probably my three favorite. Uh, those would be the, the ones I'd be most stoked to find uh, for sure. Uh, let's see. Can insects feel pain? How can such a thing be proven? Very good question. Um, Personally, I don't believe they can. Uh, some people argue that fact um, because, you know, they can react to stimuli. You know, if somebody were to pull its leg off, you know, it seems distressed. Um, the, the main point being they don't 
have a very complex nervous system. Uh, they don't even have brains. Uh, so the way that they process pain would be, I mean, just alien to the to the way that compared to the way that we feel pain. Uh, being vertebrate mammals, we have a large brain. We have nerves that run the length of our bodies, um, thousands and thousands and thousands of nerve endings, and um, we're, we're we're soft bodied organisms that 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 rely on on delicate touch. We're very articulate. You know, you could pick up a blade of grass. You know, so we're we're sensitive and we can we can feel a lot more things. Um, insects are they have ganglion, which are little clusters of of nerve cells. Um, that are essentially, you know, more, more movement based, you know, right arm, left arm, right arm, left arm. Um, now, however, there's a lot that we don't understand about, uh, insect cognition, if you can call it that, um, that, that we might understand more of in the future. As of right now, uh, it's very unlikely that insects feel what we consider to be pain. Um, obviously it's, it's not, um, in their best interest to be, hurt so they do react to to you know losing a limb or being caught in something or 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 you know extreme heat or extreme cold as a living organism they can react to stimuli um but there's not a lot that we can really try and figure out uh pain wise they can they definitely can feel something um but uh not not nearly on the same level as 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 vertebrate animals and like i said again i could be proven wrong but um as far as my understanding goes uh it, it, it's a very simplistic, uh, rudimentary uh, nervous system reaction. Um, oh, wow, we got a lot more questions. Okay, uh, what is my favorite arachnid? Um, I feel like I answered that one. Um, I would say Latrid some of the Latrodectus, uh, Latrodectus elegans, perhaps, uh, Latrodectus uh, minivodes, really pretty, Kirkavians. Um, Tridesum guttatus, those are all beautiful widow spiders. Um, I would say that the widow spiders are some of my absolute favorites, um, for sure. What did I do with the Chrysina beetles I caught? Uh, I bred them all. Um, so Chrysina, Wood Eye, and Gloriosa, um, I bred them. I got over a hundred larvae from my Chrysina Wood Eye, and I took four females and like 10 males. Um, and I, and I sold, I sold half of them, um, and the other half, I just did a substrate change on. I've still got r ridiculous amounts of Chrysina. Um, but I kept them uh, for months. Uh, they eat walnut leaves. Uh, the Gloriosa feed on uh, juniper. Uh, so I just collected leaves for them and uh, put them in my, into my beetle collection. And they did really well. Um, and then when I separated out all the beetle larvae, I was like, oh, you know, Kevin home alone. Like, I've got over 100 beetles to feed. And, and they don't get too big, but but – 100 larvae eat a lot of flake soil. So I've had to spend like $300 maintaining them. But luckily I, I offset some of that by uh, selling them, selling some of the adults. Um, what is my favorite dog? Dog. I, I, I put it together that this is Kevin. Kevin is my brother-in-law and he knows that I'm not a huge fan of dogs. And people are always so surprised to hear that, that I'm not a huge fan of dogs. But um, I just don't like them. <laughs> I think I, I think like you know be, oh what's your favorite animal oh dog I'm like okay seems kind of boring that's just like we took a like a really nice wild animal and then crushed it down into like a brachycephalic pug that chokes on its throat not my cup of tea um I guess you could consider me more of a cat person but even more so more of a reptile or insect or amphibian person um thank you Tim for the Donation. Um, and so essentially, uh, I, I, I prefer the natural stuff, but yes. Um, what is the most special insect or animal to you? Well, I'll say insect and then animal, I'll assume vertebrate. Uh, technically, both insects. Um, let's see. Uh, the most special insect. I think I love bullet ants more than anything. Bullet ants and maybe giant stag beetles like uh, 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 Dorcas Titanus. Really pretty, um, really nice looking beetles. Um, just because I, I, I really do like them. And then the most special animal personally to me was the pangolin that we found. Uh, that's a very special animal to me. Uh, second question, will we ever get a wife reveal? 
Uh, I'm sure we will. I'd like to have her come on some trips here. Um, and uh, you, you should see her at some point, yes. Um, thanks for answering my question. I loved your baby wombat video. Great. Um, that was a really special opportunity that we couldn't have planned on. That video actually took place. So we had been, we had gotten up at 5 a.m. Um, and we drove two hours um, out uh, to the spot to look for echidnas, which are monotremes, uh, spiny anteaters native to Australia related to platypus. And we were looking, looking, looking until about 1 or 2 p.m. Started to get warm. We drove two hours back. So it's 3 p.m. We took a five-hour nap till 8. We drove back out to look. We had been looking all night, all night, all night, all night. We leave where we were at um, maybe 1, about an hour into the drive. Boom. There is the echidna waddling across the road. We jump out. I'm like... I'm like, oh, you know, half falling asleep. Like we're stunned. It was me and my buddy Callum in Australia, in New South Wales. And we're like, oh my gosh, it's the echidna. We found it. So I'm like, ah, you know, okay. I'm, I'm so excited. We found the echidna and we we're filming with it. You know, and after like 30 seconds of me filming it, it started just burrowing into the ground. So it's just this mound of spikes. And so we had so much fun. We filmed with it for maybe 30 minutes. And we we're like, whoa, this is so great. We weren't tired anymore, you know? And so we got back in the car and we're driving another hour. And then we, we pull up and there's a dead animal on the road. And I'm like, oh, that's so sad. Well, then all of a sudden I see something moving and there's a baby wombat that has been, you know, propelled from the pouch when the mother got hit from by the car and it's got little, you know, scrapes here and there, but it's very much alive and, and seemingly intact. And, and what happens is when these animals die, um, you know, rigor mortis kind of sets in and their, and their muscles kind of stiffen and it closes that pouch off. So luckily the baby was outside the pouch because when they're inside the pouch, you have to cut them out. And we might not have seen it if it was inside the pouch. So I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, and we just passed the sign that said, you know, call if, if wildlife, if you see injured wildlife, you know, like don't approach, you know, adult kangaroos that got clipped up by a car because, you know, it'll disembowel you or something. But it's a little wombat. So I go up and I'm like, wait, 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 we should probably film because I, I don't want people thinking that like we hit this. Like we stopped, you know, back there, we came over. So I just filmed for, for just, um, you know, uh, just, just for reference. And then I was like, wait, this could actually be a really special video. And so we're, we're in the car and we're not moving it. And I, when we call, we call these rehabbers and we're like, uh, we have a baby wombat. Um, and they're like, oh, okay. Like what's your address? So we give them my buddy Callum's grandparents address. It's just who, uh, we were staying with. And they were like, oh, um, can we like come and pick it up at like 11? AM. And I'm like, keep in mind, we slept like five hours in like a 36 hour time frame, And so I'm like, uh, that's fine. And so we go back to his grandparents' house. We sneak in this baby wombat and I stayed up with it until 11 AM when the lady came. So I did not sleep for, for so long that day. Um, but it was just such a cool experience. Um, let's see. What's my favorite food? I'm not sure. Um, I really like fried chicken. Uh, oh, no. Another $5. Get bit. Giant centipede and not cry, please. Uh, uh, well, we'll see. We'll see. Um, okay, let's see here. How are ant mandible muscles different from animal muscles? Okay, that's a complex question. Um, mainly, it's a difference in proteins. Um, uh, typically, and they're they're anchored in different places. Our 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 muscles are like mounted to to our bones, um, and and uh, they they can they can build up, you know, over time and 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 with stress. Uh, ant muscles, if you can call them that, um, are 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 more are more kind of hinges more like uh it's not really most arthropods uh like spiders ants and a lot of a lot of that is just pressure uh so what they're doing like like arachnids like like tarantulas they're like pushing a uh, fluid a uh, hemolymph into their limbs in order to move around so it's like their their arms are empty and they're inflating them to kind of move um and so a lot of insect muscle uh, uh you know articulation is very similar to that um or and a lot of it is is these little like 
like um like trap jaw ant jaws are like these little set mechanisms that like just click together and then you know release and so it's more of like like it pulls the tension and then lets it like snap closed um so they're much different in not only structure and 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 the chemistry of uh their makeup but um in their effectiveness and 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 what they technically are technically arthropods means joint jointed leg and it, it, most of them use a lot of a lot of like pressure pressurized systems to like locomotion for locomotion if that makes sense um let's see one of the crazy things about the venom of the executioner wasps is that it causes tissue necrosis or rotting of the flesh i have heard this um i guess we'll see um some stuff that people say causes uh, necrosis um you know a lot of times i've found it to be uh bacterial infections so uh, staphylococcus aureus causes uh, necrosis and it's always present on human skin you can never wash it off uh, so any abrasion or scratch or, or sting uh, can theoretically get infected some things um, for some reason seem to have a higher infection rate than others um, so I guess uh, we'll see I'll have to look into the chemical makeup of the venom um, what was my source of education question mark exclamation point question mark exclamation point and they're very interested in finding this out. Um, uh, most mostly just self study. Um, I I've had a few semesters of college, um, but most of this information is through self guided intensive research. Um, every place I go, I try and make sure I know as much about the wildlife as I can. Um, not only to safely be able to work with this stuff, but um, to maximize how many episodes I have. Um, I would say like ninety five percent of my videos are filmed like on the spot when I find the animal and I just have to come up with what I know. I, I have, sometimes I have very little, if not, if any, um, time to prepare, um, with what I'm going to find. Sometimes I know what I'm targeting, but sometimes we'll run into something completely random and I'll just have to be like, uh, uh what all do I know about this animal? Um, so I, I really take pride in being able to just pull information up from years and years of, of study just out of the place of, of, you know, my love and interest, uh, in these, um, types of things. Uh, I'm currently working on getting my uh, uh, associates. Um, not sure when I'll go back to school. My, my original plan was to get a PhD in biology, um, but I couldn't justify sitting in class every day for the next eight years um, while ecosystems and, and species, you know, are going extinct. Uh, I felt like I really had to be here on the front lines while I was while I'm young enough uh, to do so. Oh, I got in trouble here. So you said, when, when do we get a wife reveal and, and, and who's my, who's my team? My wife says that she's helped me film two whole videos, which she has. She filmed the, uh, uh, Polistes, uh, Carolina, the red paper wasp video that was filmed in her yard, her parents' yard. And uh, the the giant blue land crabs while we were on vacation in uh, Corpus Christi. So my wife filmed those two episodes. She's a very great camera woman. Uh, any thoughts on why reptile YouTubers don't talk much about fossilized reptiles? I work on mosasaurs. Very cool. And in my opinion, they're the coolest. Um, uh, absolutely great, uh, great observation. Um, I think... Um, I would love to include more uh, paleontological episodes. Uh, for for a good portion of my high school life, I was I was very realistically considering a career in paleontology. Um, I think probably myself and Dan Daniel Carter of Afro Herb Keeper um, are both very well versed in in paleontology, um, and we could definitely increase the amount of content that we produce on that. Uh, we kind of fossil hunt on the side while we're while we're out uh, doing things. Um, but we can definitely make more of an effort. I live in a pretty decent spot for fossils, um, but it's hard getting spots for them because I kind of do it just like as an amateur and people don't really give away their fossil spots. Um, but people have found mosasaur teeth, jaws, um, a lot of marine reptile fossils, as well as uh, some larger uh, Pleistocene uh, mammals like a uh, mastodont, uh, mammoth fossils around me as well. Um, my top three venomous snakes, Naja Pallida, very nice, Pseudo Naja Goldie, or Pseudo Haji, 
Goldie, Najah, Melanoluca. Melanoluca, that's one of the scariest snakes out there. Um, uh, that, that's probably the closest encounter I've had with a snake was a, a black Ghana um, force cobra. Very scary. Um, let's see here. I might have missed it, but what is your site called where you sell beetles and frogs? I don't have my website up. Uh, I sell most of my stuff on uh, MeWe or I'll, I'll post on Instagram when I have stuff available. If you're curious as to what I have available, um, you can just message my Instagram uh, and I, would, I can send you a list of what I have available. I ship all throughout um, the United States. So all my stuff is, is legal to ship everywhere. Um, how many beetle species do you have and what species? Um, right now I have the Chrysina, what I and Gloriosa and, uh, the Lucanus, uh, Elephus. Um, that's all I have right now. Um, uh, do you like fishing? If so, you should start a fishing channel. Um, I do like fishing. Uh, however, it doesn't fit quite well with my vertebrate, um, method. Uh, now fish again, are different from mammals. Um, but, um, fishing can be stressful for, for fish, especially larger fish. Uh, they can exhaust themselves to the point where they, uh, you know, can expire upon capturing them. Uh, I have nothing against fishing. Um, but, uh, I'd love to feature more fish just in a less intrusive way. Uh, I've got some friends of mine who, who wade into areas by these dams and they catch, big American paddlefish and remove fishing lures. And I think that that's a video idea that I'd love to do. Um, I'd love to just like um, focus more on some, on some Marine episodes, maybe go reef diving. I've got uh, uh, the, one of the newer GoPros. Um, I'll maybe, I can maybe get an underwater housing for the camera um, and get some cool footage like that. I love fish. Uh, I kept saltwater aquariums for a long time. I worked in an aquarium store and I definitely love to showcase more uh, fish for sure. Uh, I appreciate your willingness to answer controversial questions that might cost you subs. Like I said, uh, I'm here to uh, be honest and open. And, and, you know, if people don't like it, then they don't like it. Uh, do you want to know something about right the executioner wasp? Okay, what is the limit for the level of intimacy an owner and his or slash her pet reptile can have? Uh, this is actually something that I've had kind of carry over from my reptile store days, uh, people needlessly personifying reptiles. Um, reptiles can associate you with food and that's pretty much it. There's, there's nothing, they, they don't even have the part of the brain that, that, that we possess to associate positive emotions, love, care, any of that type of mammal stuff you're not going to have it with a reptile. People are like, oh, but my gecko loves me or my bearded dragon just loves to be pet. Um, probably what's happening is you're taking the animal out of the enclosure. It's dropping all the way down to room temperature and being quite cold. Um, and so a lot of people, oh, it's sleeping on me. Well, it's just desperate to get warm because reptiles are incapable of generating body heat. Um, so people are like, oh, it's snuggling me. It's freezing cold. It would do better if you put it back in its enclosure. Um, you, you can have a good relationship where you have a mutual trust. Um, a lot of venomous, uh, uh, larger venomous snakes, king cobras. I have a mutual trust with some of the king cobras that I've worked with and they'll still, they could still turn on me, but, but they know that I'm not trying to hurt them. They know that they're safe around me and they know that, that I'll listen to them when they, when they're telling me that they've had enough, you know, and et cetera. So you can have a relationship with a reptile. Um, just not, it's not like, Oh, you know, it loves me. And da, 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 da. crocodilians can recognize people. They can respond to commands. A lot of reptiles are quite intelligent. They just lack the same empathetic, uh, capacity as, as a lot of mammals and, as, and people do, but that's a great question. Um, Elijah Hunter says, thanks for answering my question as, as well. Can you give me a shout out? Here's a shout out. My favorite video is the black widow bite. It's a good video. I'm glad that that's your favorite. Cause I worked really hard on that one. Um, have you ever considered using TikTok to upload some of your wildlife clips and link your YouTube in the bio to burst, boost your views and subs on YouTube? I have, and I do have a, I do have a TikTok, Jack's world of wildlife. Um, I had some luck with it in the past. 
Um, but my stuff just kind of falls flat on there now. It's because all my content is filmed horizontally instead of vertically. And um, it doesn't translate very well. And I've put like all sorts of stuff on there. I did some singing stuff, some voice impressions because I do a lot of that type of thing. Um, but two, you know, just little clips of like the shark diving, swimming with manatees, nothing. So I, I want to try and make sure I'm putting a lot of my time and, and energy into TikTok instead of uh, just, you know, spreading myself too thin across too many platforms. I really want to build, uh, build my YouTube. Um, that's what I'm interested in, in, in working on. Um, okay. If you plan on doing another sting slash bite video, what insects slash animals are you looking to get bit or stung by? Um, I, I think, uh, we'll probably do the hobo spider. Uh, I don't know why people are still requesting that after I've already done black widow and brown recluse. Those are the top two venomous spiders in North America. Uh, but I've had some people ask me for the hobo spider. Um, I've been thinking of doing, uh, Polistes major. I can find those in the, in the Southern part of Texas, maybe some other Polistes yellow jackets and things like that, just to help you guys understand and, and, and grasp where these animals all fit in with each other. Because I could say, Oh yeah, bullet ant hurts less than Vespa tropica, but you've never been stung by either. So you don't know. But if I got stung by a yellow jacket, a lot of people have been stung by a yellow jacket. I'd say, Oh, this, you know, maybe half the pain is a bullet ant. So you're like, wow. Okay. Double yellow jacket. No oh, yellow jacket really hurt me. So that's pretty painful. You know, that type of thing. So that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. Once I can start traveling, I'd like to be able to add executioner wasp, Vespa, mandarinia, et cetera. Um, I do live in Texas currently. Uh, I live just North of, uh, Dallas. Um, that is where I'm at. Um, I don't know how long I'll be in Texas, um, but uh, I guess we will see. Um, da, 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 da. I'm going to mail you a giant centipede to get bit. What species? Because I'll take a free centipede. Um I, I, I can look into uh, getting bitten by a centipede. It's just, again, the venom is so understudied, I'm just not sure what it would do. Um, uh, what would you rather fight? A thousand rat-sized horses or one horse-sized rat? I have seen what a rat-sized rat is capable of doing. I'm going to go with a thousand rat-sized horses because... What are they going to do? Oh, a horse-sized rat could eat me, my family, and 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 chew up every mattress in my house and stockpile into a giant nest and, and give birth to, like, 14 mega rats to, like, hunt the entire populace of the DFW area. Forget that. What is my second favorite color? Uh, uh, black, maybe? Is black technically a color? I think it's all colors, isn't it? Um, black or, or, or very, 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 very dark green, maybe. Um, ever considered giving um, Twitch a shot? I have. I, it's just I'm always skeptical. I mean, even this live stream I was skeptical about doing just because it's, it's very foreign compared to what I've done before. And... Um, Again, just me being a solo team most of the time, at least for editing and, and putting stuff together, um, I'm always a little hesitant to um, try new stuff because I like to try and at least put on the facade that I, I know what I'm doing and I can produce professional grade content. And so I do outsource for some stuff, um, but I don't know. Maybe we'll see um, if, if, it, if you guys think it's worth me hopping over to Twitch, I, you know, Maybe. Uh, to elaborate slightly on a previous question, what is your research process like prior to a big trip? Great question. Um, so a lot of the time I, I do pick countries based off of, you know, certain species that I'd like to see. You know, oh, Asia I picked because I wanted to try and see some Asian species, um, you know, cobras, uh, orangutans was something I was really passionate about looking for pangolins, maybe the possible chance that we were actually able to find some. Um, 
so my 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 research process is I pretty much buy maybe two hundred dollars worth of field guides. That's one of the main things that I'll do: mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, um, insects. I I can I can fib, I can kind of. I, I, I know enough about insects to just pick up and, and, and talk about stuff. Um, I, I'd say insects are one of my stronger suits. Uh, so, but a lot of stuff, you know, different mammals, you know, I could say, oh, what is that? Oh, it's a, you know, a, a couscous or, oh, it's a, you know, what kind of civet is that? You know, some places you go, there's a lot of eclectic small mammal life that I'm just, you know, I could, I, I might know what it is, but I don't know what species it is. Like when we were in Thailand, we found those lorises. I, luckily I had my, my field guide. Oh, it's a Sundolorus, a uh, Nicticibus uh, Susang, um, uh, versus like, oh, well, I know it's a Sundolorus, but I don't know what kind it is. Cause I like to be able to tell you guys uh, what stuff is, but essentially what I do is I'll read through all those field guides and, uh Oh, I had one of my, uh, my light went out. Uh, let's see here. Now it's very dark. What the? Um, hmm. One second. Let me see if I can find another light for this. Gosh, this guy. So unprofessional. His equipment... My 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 top of the line um, lighting system, my flashlights. Ooh, am I just overheated? It's hot. Um, essentially, my 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 main thing is that um, I have a general understanding of what I'm looking for. I consider myself to be somewhat of a generalist. I try and make sure that I am pretty well versed in most of what we could find because like I said, again, I don't have time to, to some, some stuff is like running out right in front of me and I have to grab it and go and start shooting. Um, so I don't have time to just sit there in the forest and try and get reception to look up a Wikipedia article or something like that. So it's kind of a hit or miss. Sometimes I'm, I'm really solid on my stuff. Uh, sometimes I'll, I'll take scholarly articles and I'll copy paste them into my notes to reference. Oh, maybe I'll run into this. Let me copy this down. So I've got some stuff to talk about. Um, but yeah, I try and just cram and study before I go places. Um, do I have a favorite tortoise? Uh, I love algebra tortoises. I love, uh, um, Galapagos tortoises. Those are probably my two favorite. Have I ever been to Arkansas? Yep. I was there, um, a few months ago, uh, looking for stag beetles. Am I vegan? I am not. Uh, however, I have cut out most red meat, um, and I'm pretty much just on chicken and fish and, and crustaceans. Um, what is your opinion on Coyote Peterson? Uh, I think he's an entertainer. I don't really find him to be that educational. Uh, he does travel with a biologist whom I respect, uh, a gentleman named Mario. Um, and I have no issue with Mario. There we go. Our light is back. Um, I've heard good things about him, but he focuses more on megafauna, larger animals. And for some reason they've decided to go with the whole insect, you know, sting style stuff. And, and they just, they just, they get a lot of stuff wrong. A lot of the time, uh, a lot of insects misidentified, arachnids misidentified and that kind of stuff rubs me the wrong way. I have no issue with Mario. I, I find coyote to be a, a child entertainer. Um, uh, that's my opinion on him. Uh, like I said, there's there's a there's a place for everything. I I don't find a lot of what he does with insects and in some of the sting videos to be very appropriate. I think he kind of blows stuff out of proportion. Thanks for answering. I'm doing my PhD currently. Well, congrats! And although I can't say I recommend paleo for everyone for a career, uh, at least anyone can enjoy it without a degree. Yeah, I I think it's great. Um, I really. I really enjoy it. I, and, and, and it makes, it gives you a, a, a different perspective to imagine, oh my gosh, you know, a few little time zones ago, you know, this was a, a grazing pasture for mammoths and, and giant sloths. And you can kind of see remnants of some of these fragmented ecosystems or extinct ecosystems um, kind of echo through into modern day. I love and miss you, Bob. So sweet. Love my East Texas people. Giant desert centipede. 
Um, we should do a collab before you move. Do you go to NARBC Arlington? That's about 50 minutes from my house. So I'm totally down to do um, a collab. Yeah, no problem. Um, you can shoot me an email uh, if you have Instagram uh, or you can comment on one of my like less popular videos if you don't want people to see your email. Um, and uh, yeah, we can work something out to do a, a collab. I'm trying to get a lot of collabs for this next year. So the more the merrier. Um, <laughs> I gave you ten dollars. Now don't make me spend fifty dollars. I will. Oh, I'm not gonna make you spend fifty dollars. Please don't spend fifty dollars on the live stream to try and get me to get bitten by a centipede. I will consider it. I am. I just prefer to do wasps and and some of the little spiders and stuff. Um, and I'd like to get it to the point where we've got enough momentum from all the sting videos to where I don't have to rely on them as heavily, and I can do more mammals and more, uh, you know, amphibians and stuff like that. <laughs> Tim going sicko mode on the donations. Yes, he is. Uh, what would your response be to the view owning a living animal is immoral because they're unable to give consent and assuming what they want is not enough to validate ownership? Very good. Um, that's part of what my my neutral stance um, on Jacksonville Wildlife. I, I don't necessarily vocally support um, just owning animals in captivity. Um, I think that there's a lot that's wrong with that type of idea of just keeping an animal or, oh, I want it, so I'm going to have it. Uh, another one of my issues with dogs, a lot of dogs are just kept really unhealthily. They, they get obese, they die because people aren't taking care of them or they keep them at an apartment all day and stuff like that. I don't necessarily – I'm not behind keeping every single species of animal, but I, I would say – I don't think there's anything immoral with with preserving animals in captivity under certain guidelines. Like when you guys see my my frog room, um, what I'm doing it 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 does it actively helps conservation. I'm funding conservation first off by purchasing these animals from sustainable um, farm projects in South America, and then two, um, I'm providing legal access to these species uh, for collectors who keep them very well. Um, in the hobby, discouraging uh, illegal poaching and stealing them from the wild. Uh, people are always going to keep animals in captivity. Um, what I think is you have to give animals options. If, this, if an animal can live a happy, healthy, enriching life in captivity, that's great. A lot of times people romanticize the wild uh, when it's a very difficult place for animals to live. Uh, if you had food on a schedule places to hang out and hide, it's not too cold, it's not too hot, uh, a plethora of mates at your disposal. I, I think, you know, a lot of the animals in captivity, they're they're living a pretty pampered and, and good life, free of parasites, free of, of injury, free of, you know, you know, X, Y, and Z. So I don't necessarily, um, I, I don't think it's immoral. My, 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 my answer essentially to that is, is how are you looking at it? I think, when we look at, should I be able to keep something? Should I be able to have something in my stewardship? I don't really even like the word ownership because ownership implies that you can do whatever you want. Um, oh, it's my property. I, I think I think what it, it's it's a relationship, really. If you choose to take an animal into your care, you have to facilitate the best care that that you can. And and if you're not able to, you shouldn't have the animal. Um, so essentially, my answer is. Um, it's not immoral to, to have an animal in your care. Um, as long as you are taking proper care of the animal and it is living a similar life to what it would be able to carry out in the wild, um, then, uh, then that's fine. Um, it's when people are like, you know, oh, well, I'm breeding, you know, a thousand ball pythons and tubs, you know, stacked 10 feet high and I've got a cougar, you know, chained out back to a, you know, dog kennel that I feed, you know, leftover steaks I get from behind Walmart. That's just, that's animal abuse. I'm not in support of animal abuse, but if you say, uh, you know, I'm a wealthy philanthropist, I have two acres to keep, uh, you know, a mountain lion on and, and an enriching habitat, plenty of places to hide, uh, you know, regular healthy whole diet, all the power to you. You're, you're doing better than a lot of zoos and I, and a lot of zoos actively contribute to conservation. Um, so I'm, I'm really not in opposition of, of, of animals in captivity. 
I, I would say I'm in the opposition of, of people just keeping animals because they want them. I think that there's a certain way you have to go about it. Um, because otherwise it's not fair to the animal. If it's fair to the animal and you're taking everything into consideration, my frogs have, have everything that they require in the wild to survive in my captivity, um, in my care. Uh, they're able to reproduce how they re reproduce in the wild. They're comfortable enough to reproduce. Their babies are healthy. Um, you know, there, there's all these little tick marks that you can kind of check off. Okay, they're doing well. They're, they're breeding. Uh, their, their babies are coming out healthy. Um, you know, these are all things that we can look at. And a lot of zoological facilities are going to be the last places some of these animals survive. Um, you know, some of these animals we might only be able to see in captivity. And then it's an ethical dilemma of, you know, okay, well, we can't reintroduce them into the wild. So is it just to keep them, you know, in captivity for the remainder of their you know, lives? So it gets into some tricky situations. Um, but great question. Um, let's see. What would you rather fight now? One horse-sized rat or 50 horse-sized horses? Oh, gosh. Um, I feel like I'd get trampled pretty quick by 50 horse-sized horses. Um, but I would also be ripped to shreds by a horse-sized rat. So I guess, really, it wouldn't be what would I rather fight, but how soon would one of these options kill me? Uh, I'm going to go with the 50 horse-sized horses because I feel like if I got, you know stomped and trampled i'd be dead pretty quick but the rat would just like nibble and, and chew on my bones and uh, you know yuck um what do i know about newly discovered insects very little they're newly discovered uh do you plan on filming with mata mata turtles i love mata matas um i'd love to film with mata mata turtles i, I don't have any but I, at some point i would like to um I'm confused by this question. Uh, this might be the most hardest question. How do you, what animals carries a pathogen or disease? Do you mean how, how do you know what animal carries a pathogen or disease? Um, I mean, I don't know. Uh, some, some, some diseases can, can remain, you know, undetectable physically. You have to take a blood sample or something. Uh, if, if you're referring to like stuff like, like, like the, COVID-19 outbreak that they, you feel, you know, can be traced back to the wet markets in Asia. Um, just limit your exposure to, to fecal matter and, and blood and, and juices of, of wild animals that have been, you know, neglected and, and crammed into cages. Uh, in fact, uh, that shouldn't happen in the first place. And that's why people uh, do get sick. And that's, we're going to continue to have pandemics if we don't, uh, you know, get our act together and you know, stop mistreating uh, wildlife in that way. Um, those are super dangerous um, ways to get diseases. Things like like uh, Ebola. That's that's typically uh, an infection from bushmeat from taking wild animals that, that have diseases that live with them, um, and then uh, getting contaminated with that, and then spreading it to other people. Um, so I think uh, just don't eat exotic animals that you would buy at sketchy markets. Um, other than that, most animals in the wild, you know, you, you shouldn't have to worry about pathogens and disease. <laughs> should we let pandas die out or should we try to preserve their species? Um, so pandas, that's an interesting question. Um, people are going to have their own answer to this. Um, we essentially, we have a responsibility as, as the dominant life forms on the planet um, to take care of our wildlife. And what we have displaced and damaged, we should take the responsibility to fix. Pandas, we spend millions of dollars on their conservation. But pandas are not our fault that they're going extinct. We have plenty of, of, of sanctuaries now set up for pandas. They're extinct because the females are too picky. Um, they don't breed readily. They're very difficult to, to get to reproduce uh, naturally. And um, that's not uh, necessarily our problem. That's what we call natural selection. So, so by, by spending millions and millions of dollars in preserving panda bears, um, we, are, we are allocating money towards a species that, that is, is, is trying to go extinct you know, by their own 
you know, hand, not not necessarily us. And we could be directing those funds to species that that are critical to, you know, environmental health, whales, uh, critical in, in pulling carbon out of the atmosphere via their their life cycle and, and, and feeding cycle or, or coral reefs or or habitat protection for for thousands of species instead of just, oh, well, panda bears are cute. So let's spend tons of money on on panda bears uh, when, in fact, they're not even interested in their own conservation because we can't get them to mate with each other. <laughs> so a little uh, 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 disappointing, an incel answer on the pandas. Yes, essentially, they they don't want to mate with each other. <laughs> um, thoughts on the closed taxa and academia dilemma. Closed taxa. Uh, is that, is it, I haven't heard that. Is that... Um, standardizing and maintaining uh, uh, taxonomic binomials uh, without changing them. Uh, I think I think there's a lot that needs to be fixed uh, with taxonomy in general because we classify animals like or, or organisms all over the place. Sometimes it's with DNA, sometimes it's with physical attributes, sometimes it's with you know genotype, uh, color, you know, range. I mean, there's a whole set of, of variables to, to classify organisms. So we need to like standardize how we um, classify organisms in the, with their binomials um, versus, uh, I don't know, restricting how we can change them. Uh, but that's a good question. And comment again, if that's not what you're trying to say. I, I just don't want to speak to something if, I, if I'm not familiar with it. Uh, I think that's what you're asking me. You have a, you at least have a chance against the rat, whereas it wouldn't be possible to fight all the horses. I feel like I don't have a chance with the rat. Working in working at the reptile shop and we were selling, you know, feeder rats. Rats are are vicious. They're smart. They're fast. Rats are are not something to mess with. I'd be I would I would much rather I could climb a tree and get away from the horses. You couldn't climb a tree to get away from the rat. It'd like climb the tree and rip your legs off and eat you. Do you get checked for parasites regularly? Surprisingly, um, I have got a few bad uh, parasite um, infections <coughs> over the years. Uh, nothing crazy. Uh, I did get some bad ones that affected my digestion. Um, I can't really eat red meat uh, very well without it really upsetting my stomach now uh, because of some parasites that I got while I was in uh, Costa Rica, not this previous time, but the time before. Um, but it doesn't really matter cause it's good for the environment not to eat, uh, beef. Um, but I actually don't get checked for parasites often. Uh, I will kind of really keep tabs on what my body's doing. Um, in certain countries, uh, I did get a little bit of like a bacterial stomach thing in Borneo. Uh, but Thailand, I was, you know, completely fine. So if, if I have like a, if I have something kind of pop up where I'm kind of like, Ooh, you know, that shouldn't be happening. Uh, I will go and get tested for parasites, but, um, typically I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, well, if it's not, you know, really doing something to me, I'm just going to wait for it to go away. Uh, which probably isn't the best method, but, um, every, really technically everybody has parasites. If, if, if you, if you eat, um, meat, uh, you most likely have parasites. If you eat fast food, you most likely have parasites on some level. It's somewhat normal, uh, for, for most organisms to have some level of, of parasitism going on uh, at any point in their lives. So it's not something that I'm worried about or fearful of all the time. But if, if something does pop up that appears to be an issue, I will go and get it resolved. What's my favorite fossil animal? Man, you guys are coming up with great questions. This live stream is going to be like 14 hours long. I'm going to be here until, you know, Tuesday. Um, my favorite fossil animal. Hmm. I love so many of them. Uh, I, I'd have to say I'm going to break it down into like a few groups. Um, my favorite fossil fish is probably Dunkleosteus. Really cool, massive um, placoderm with plated skull, big bone sheaths, just massive jaws for crushing other hard bony plated fish. Uh, uh, they lived in the Devonian era. Um, so they were just slicing up, you know, the earlier sharks and and other placodermic fish uh really cool that's probably my favorite extinct fish um fossilized dinosaur i'd have to say probably carnotaurus i'm a big fan of the abelids and little flap arms i really like those um 
Let's see. What else? My favorite fossilized mammal. Um, I really, I really like a lot of the extinct proboscideans, uh, mammoths, gompotheres. I would just love for some of those to still be around uh, to study, um, as well as thylacelio, uh, the marsupial lion, which was uh, relative to the wombat and koala, actually, but was carnivorous and had these had these wedged teeth that that we believe was used to pinch off the air pipe. Uh, the esophagus and the trachea of animals to suffocate them, to then feed on them. A uh, super bizarre animal about the size of a jaguar, largest carnivorous animal, uh, I mean, carnivorous mammal that we know of that has ever been native to Australia. Um, I think that those would be absolutely stunning to, to um, learn about. I'm a big fan of marsupials um, just because they're just so different from a lot of the placental mammals that we uh, get over on this side of the world. Uh, save opossums, which are marsupials. Um, what do you think of Coyote Peterson? I answered this question earlier. You can go back and take a look. Um, essentially, I think I, I don't consider him to be an educator. I, I consider him to be a, a, a entertainer of children. I, I don't find him to have a lot of educational content. Uh, what extinct animal would you bring back if you could? I think um, mammoths. Uh, I think there's a lot of ecosystems where where proboscidans are are missing that could be greatly improved uh, by their reintroduction. Uh, so places like a lot of North America, the grasslands, some of the sub uh, sub savanna uh, live oak forests, even down here in Texas, um, out towards Florida. I think a lot of North America could benefit from having large uh, herbivorous grazers, as well as a lot of Asia um, could have more cold tolerant species of proboscidans. How do scientists avoid giving a particular insect species multiple scientific names when it is independently discovered by different entomologists? Well, essentially what happens is once you have uh, an insect described, um, it's described. So you could say, oh, well, I discovered it first or I discovered it first. Whoever publishes it, it's, it's, it's done. It's, it's, it's described. So you could have 20 people find it you know, within a year, but the first person who finds it, who describes it, um, it, 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 it's described with that binomial, with that name that gets standardized. Um, then you might say, Oh, well, Hey, you know, this looks different enough. It could be a subspecies. Then you could have, you know, different species or maybe, you know, uh, you know, different species or different subspecies. Um, but, uh, once they discover it, it's discovered and it has its own name, just like any other species of animal. Any mythological creatures you wish were real and could be studied? Oh, that's interesting. Um, I think um, uh, like 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 Sasquatch, Bigfoot. I would love to see um, a North American species of of browsing ape. Um, I think that that would be super interesting, especially being a solitary species of hominid ape. Um, That'd be super crazy to be able to study. They'd probably be super intelligent, large, uh, and who knows? Yeah, maybe we'll get to study them. Uh, on top of that, I'd be really interested to see, um, you know, things like uh, the Loch Ness monster, uh, which would be more like a plesiosaur type marine reptile. Uh, and there's some stuff that's 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 weird like that because a lot of those similar types of animals like Gigantopithecus was native to Asia, could have come over in the land bridge and, and started some of those Bigfoot, uh, you know, legends or things like, you know, plesiosaur or marine reptiles started the like Loch Ness stuff. Uh, and, and it gets interesting when, you know, random things will pop up. Like they've recorded echolocation in Lake Loch Ness. Which I'm not saying the Loch Ness monster is real, but there's no fish that's ever been recorded to echolocate. So there's, there could be something in there, uh, at, at least new to science, uh, that we weren't, or at least we, something we weren't aware that was in that lake, uh, which is super fascinating to me. I was like, to hear that, I was like, wow, the, it's cut off. It's a, it's, a, it's a lake that's been cut off from the ocean, uh, and it's deep, and it's filled with caverns, so who knows? No, great question. Thoughts on the invertebrate and reptile black market and the poaching of understudied or undescribed species for the pet trade. Hate it. Hate it. 
uh, it's one of the biggest things that I'm combating with, with my own stuff is, is, uh, combating poaching uh, on, on such a level that, that is detrimental, especially understudied or undescribed species, because we don't know if they're endangered or not. You could you could have just collected the entire population of that subspecies. It's only native to that mountain range, and you just destroyed the entire adult population. I think unregulated collection of any species is, is unethical and completely terrible. Um, so I obviously not support of this, uh, the reptile black market or poaching. If you could have one pet snake, what would it be? Um, well, I do have a snake. Uh, I have a monocled cobra. Um, and she's sweet. She's a cute little... Uh, uh, she's a cute little monocled cobra. She's really nice. Um, I would say I would prefer to keep um, uh, king cobra uh, just because I do like them. But I just don't have the space. And two, I... I don't believe in, in keeping them and raising them on a uh, unnatural diet. So I would need a large supply of frozen snakes uh, to feed the King Cobra. So that like what I was mentioning earlier, that's, that's my self policing, even though I'd prefer to keep a King Cobra, I can't provide um, uh, an ethical, ethical care for it right now. And so I'm not going to get it right now. Uh, in the future, if I have all the money at my disposal that I want, I'd build a massive enclosure, uh, feed it a natural diet. Um, and be happy to have a king cobra. Uh, but I do have I do have a monocle cobra right now, little baby one, really cute. There are only a hundred to forty thousand koalas left in Australia. It is very sad. Um, koalas again are another thing that they they have difficulty finding mates in the wild because their ranges are so fragmented now from population uh, separation and um, oh excuse me. From, from habitat fragmentation and wildfires and things like that, as well as disease. Uh, happy you didn't limit your answer to just dinosaurs. That's a whole group, man. I got to I gotta do better than that. Yeah, the abelosaurids I like. Um, dinosaurs, that's that's way too many species to, to try and cram into one answer. Um, do you think highly intelligent species like chimps, African gray parrots, crows, and dolphins should be considered persons? Very good. Uh, I do think I would love to see um, some legislation passed defending or 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 in in protection of some of these higher intellect species because there's really so little that we understand uh, things like orca whales, cetaceans, dolphins, uh, great apes. There's a lot that we are finding out about their intelligence. Elephants as well. Um, that, that we could find that they're even more intelligent than we've given them credit for. I think I would, I would love to see some type of, of top tier intellect list, you know, some of the most intelligent species aside from people on the planet. And I would like to see them have a heightened list of, of rights. Uh, that would be great. Um, you could say, actually, you know, you need a minimum requirement of this much space. You need a minimum requirement of this much, uh, you know, uh, Oh my gosh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Uh, this much uh, enrichment uh, to stimulate their, their their large minds so that they're, they're not getting depressed, not getting bored. Um, I would love to see th that type of stuff be implemented uh, because th they are they are different. I mean, it's different than throwing you know a lizard in a in a glass box, you know, putting it on display at the zoo. You know, um, I would like to see more work put into the intelligent species that 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 deserve uh, a little more care a great question do i believe insects are conscious uh like like aware of their surroundings or like able to like comprise thoughts and 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 like like individual you know consciousness is that what you're asking Um, I, I don't believe that they that they have a lot of individual uh, awareness, um, self aware. I don't think that they are. Uh, I mean, maybe on like the tiniest rudimentary level, in that they can perceive that everything is at their perspective. That makes sense. Like, oh, there's a flower. I can fly over to that flower. Uh, but I don't think they dwell on existence all that much. I think. I think. A lot of, of these smaller organisms, um, I think, are operating out of a lot more instinct than brain function. Like I said earlier, insects don't really have a brain. They have these ganglion, which are which are nerve cell 
kind of coagulants that that control mostly motor function and and base you know drives like it's not like they can be like hmm i wonder what i'm gonna do today they're gonna be like hungry go eat food hungry go eat food sleepy bird ahead hide you know i mean it's like uh, the, it's gonna be more of a plug and play okay hold on do you think there are undescribed subspecies of human um, that's where it gets tricky. Uh, some people, some people argue against, uh, the classification of people and I'm not about to get canceled over, uh, that, uh, particular, um, uh, topic. But like I said before, we really don't have a lot of specifications around classification. Uh, so there are some people that argue that, uh, while we are all homo sapiens, um, there are distinct differences between us, um, that you can, see and validate and uh, you could award some species ship too. Um, I don't think that it would necessarily be people that are isolated. I think, you know, we all come from different genetic pockets of, of groups of people that have descended from, you know, common ancestors and things like that. Um, I, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't call them undescribed subspecies. I, I would just say that, that, you know, we're all, I mean, really we're all people, we're all human beings. Um, and whether or not you want to, you know, cut off the differences at race or, or, or subspecies or, 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 you know, locale. I mean, people, people can classify, I mean, people classify snakes, you know, all the way down to the tiniest uh, T, you know, so I don't know. I, I'm not going to say anything about that. Um, but uh, we, we, we don't really have a standardized way of classifying species. We classify species for any reason we can think of. Um, so theoretically you can find groups of people who are different from other groups of people genetically, even, um, that you could scientifically, theoretically, yeah, award a differentiation to, um, do you think humans have some amount of existential right to disturb the ecosystem or be reckless about things in general? Um, I, I, I don't. I'm not sure if I understand the question fully, um, but I think a lot of people get the wrong idea about um, our place. And I feel like there's not a lot that justifies the current idea of what we're supposed to be doing. I think we really prioritize profit. We really prioritize um, making money. We really prioritize businesses. We really prioritize our own comfort. Um, and that's all, those are all, you know, good things in their own microcosm, but on this scale that we're at, um, they're super, super harmful. And what I mean by that is you get to the point where we consume so much, we, we take so much that it's, it's harmful for the environment and it's not sustainable. So eventually we're all, we're going to get kind of screwed over and there's not going to be enough food. There's not going to be enough resources, uh, for everybody, um, I do not think we have a right to disturb the ecosystem or be reckless about things in general. I don't. And I don't know where that comes from. Uh, cause most, even, even most religious perspectives, which is typically where people get to, Oh, you know, well, I'm in charge of this planet. I, this deity gave us, you know, dominion, this deity gave us dominion. Um, most religions even are, are very pro stewardship, very pro, you know, take care of what you've been given you know, respect other life, uh, you know, uh, Buddhism, uh, Hinduism is very much like that. Really, it, you see that some in Christianity, be good stewards. Um, so I, I really don't know where that idea comes from. If it's just modern age capitalism, that's just like, yeah, cut down the forest. It's making us money. Woohoo. But I don't know. Um, I don't think we have a right to just do whatever we want. I think we're in a delicate balance and we need to protect it so that we're able to not only live healthy and happy lives, but the earth can remain healthy and happy, which keeps us healthy and happy. So seems like it should be a no brainer for us to take care of the only thing that's sustaining all of our lives. Um, okay. I have only seen a small paragraph on Heloderma Texana. Do you know much about it? I have not heard of that. Um, to my knowledge, we don't have a native uh, Heloderma. Um, I would love to see that. Uh, that paper, um, if if they truly found it in Texas, um, I would love to go and try and find it. Uh, Heloderma is probably my favorite genera of lizard. Um, so I have not heard about it. Uh, is there a question that you get asked that you hate answering? 
what what a great question um i don't know is there a question that i get asked that i hate answering i really don't mind answering any sort of question i would say um oh it's extinct oh well that's why i haven't heard of it um no, I, I haven't. I haven't heard of that uh, uh, heloderma taxon. I'd love to learn about it, though. This is a, a fossilized remains of a extinct heloderma. That's cool. Um, a question that I get asked that I hate answering. Don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll think of something later. Um. Do do do. Um. Wait a minute. Have you ever found that very similar in appearance or classification insect species possess very different venoms? Oh, good question. I'm going to answer a few more questions and I think we're going to cut it off. We're, we're already over discounting the five minutes that we started late because I couldn't figure out how to get this turned on. But we're already at like two hours. Um, okay, so have you ever found that very similar in appearance or classification insect species possess different venoms? I have found this to be the case specifically in Costa Rica is when I notice it species at montane elevations, their stings, nothing, nothing. The, the giant tarantula hawk wasp that I caught in Monteverde, Costa Rica, nothing. Hardly was a pinch. Uh, some of the odontomachus, the trap giants, those sting like heck in the lowland forests really bad. I've, I've been pegged by those a ton of times, like lifting up a log and there'd be like, 200 workers instead of me, instead of like a normal person. Oh no, there's a bunch of ants in there. I'm like, oh, where's the queen? I'm going to see. Had two crawl up on either hand. Boom, sting me. It it stings like fire. They they hurt bad, probably worse even than Neoponera velosa. Now it goes away really quick, but but they hurt. But up in Monteverde, a very similar species, same genus, same country, separated by a few hundred miles. I, it, I was, I was like, I could take a thousand of these stings. They don't hurt at all. Um, the great question. Yeah, I've I've seen. I mean, there's something going on that's different. I don't know if it's the elevation that affects it. I don't know if I just somehow happen to grab the 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 ten or so individuals of of you know four different species that just had stung the crap out of something else. I don't know. Um, but uh, very yeah, you you do see that. And and two, um, certain species of of crotalids like rattlesnakes. Uh, you can you can go one place and have them have a totally different venom composition than than in another place. Um, so you can totally see differences in venom. Uh, even even you know as far as like you know 20, 50, 100 miles away from each other, uh, which is super interesting. Again, it's it's basically like this species arises and then it gets separated and then these little pockets breed together and and just kind of multiply these differences in amongst themselves. All right, bye, Christian. Have fun watching the new Borneo video. It's a good one. But um, I think uh, I'll, I'll I'll do two more questions if anybody's got anything, and then I am I gotta eat dinner or something. But. Um, I'm glad that this was the best one that you've ever joined. I, I'm I'm excited to hear that. I'll I'll be doing more of them in the future. I've got plenty of stuff to talk about. Uh, any advice for aspiring YouTubers? Not sure I'm the exact person to uh, talk to you about. I what I would do is what I found to be really helpful is just working on creating regular content um, and consistent content. Find your rhythm and stick with it. Um, cut off the fat. Cut off the stuff that doesn't work. Um, for the longest time, I was just, I mean, my titles were super, super long. And I found that that really what I just need to do is upload once or twice a week decent videos, content that I could be like, yeah, I'm proud that that's my stuff. And just let the algorithms kind of kind of get vamped up and excited to carry that. I, there's nothing that I've seen in my content that that would make me think oh i really need to revisit the drawing board and try and figure out something different uh, i like trying new things like this live stream idea uh other stuff um but my biggest suggestion is 
just regular uploads. That's all I found that's really that's really helped me. And obviously, you can find a popular idea or 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 collaboration ideas. Um, but I always find for the for ten collaboration ideas that I want to do, you know, maybe one or two of them work out. Uh, so try and network. You know, be be active on YouTube. Try and find other people. Feel free to email other people about collaborations. I'm always open to building my my you know conservationist group because because it it's it's not competition for me to get other people to reach more people to protect the planet that we live on my goal is to educate and teach and and get everybody to rally around our planet i'm not gonna be like oh, you're stealing all these subs from me and they could be putting money in my pocket that's not what i'm here to do I'm here to educate so i would just say stay true to your message upload regularly do what you can and that's all YouTube can ask of you. And at the end of the day, if it doesn't work out and you don't get hundreds of thousands of subscribers and millions of dollars in your bank account to donate to conservation, of course, um, you, you'll, you should be the better off for it. And you, I, I'm never going to, I'm never going to get to the point where I'm like, Oh man, you know, I really wish I would have, you know, made so much money off of this. It was such a waste. No, I've had, I've had so many great adventures. I've been to so many awesome places and, and I've had, I've met so many friends that I've had, I have lifelong, you know, friend connections with. Uh, so I would just say upload regularly, do what you can. Um, you know, if the algorithms don't favor you, don't sweat it, keep working at it. If it gets to the point where it's too much, take a break. Hey, you don't, you never know. A video could get picked up overnight, you know, put some money in your bank account for you to carry on and keep doing it. I, I it's, it's a slow grow from, from, from zero to 10,000. So I hear, um, after that you, you start getting a little more momentum after a hundred thousand, you start getting a little more momentum. Um, and then you've got a lot of people, um, on your side, on your team that can help, you know, promote your stuff and share your stuff. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Uh, great question, though. Um, thank you for the live. It was great getting to know more about you. Awesome. Have a great night. You too. Thanks, Jack. I'm your biggest fan. I wonder why. Everybody, uh, just a sneak peek. That is my wife there, Jordan Sapp. Now Jordan Schoenhoff. Her Google account is still not changed. Um, so she is my biggest fan. Sorry. You guys are outcompeted time and time again. Uh, well, I'm glad that you guys enjoyed this live stream. This is something new, uh, but I had a lot of fun. <clears throat> and hopefully I'm not super hoarse tomorrow because I've been talking for over two hours. But I hope that you learned something. I hope that I answered some of your questions. And um, we might be doing this, I don't know, um, once a week. I could do this every Sunday. We could make it a Sunday thing. Uh <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that's funny. That's that's a good addition, Dan. Dan says, to clarify, I, Dan, will fight Jordan for your love. So sweet, Dan. Well, I can love both of you. It's okay. I will fight Dan and Jordan for his frogs. <laughs> good luck getting my frogs from me. Um, but I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Um, I hope that you all had fun. I hope that it was educational. I hope that I didn't offend anybody because that's not what I'm trying to do. I just want to educate. I try to answer your questions uh, truthfully and um, in the best of my ability. So I hope that you enjoy this video and look forward to more. Also, stay tuned. I'm going to try and put together some more videos this week. I I'm trying to upload twice a week in December. Um, I may back off to once a week in January until I can get some more content going. Um, but I'm really trying to upload frequently like comment share subscribe turn on post notifications so you don't miss anything and uh, i appreciate all your support so just keep on supporting and i can keep on doing what i'm doing so uh love you all uh at ease and good night